getting warmed up, used to the bike, you know you do have to warm up. So, and it's just getting all the air your stuff together as far as like your controls and your mental part about it so today i wanted to i have a couple topics i wanted to talk about one of them is training and seat time can be quite controversial but it shouldn't be so some some think that all you need is seat time and then you're good to go that is your training the seat time um, Partially yes, but not always, because this is this is the way to explain it. Training and seat time are two complete different things. Not even close to being the same thing. They they accomplish um, stuff for you, but they're not the same thing. So an example on on training, and I'll give the, this applies to anything. This applies to uh, baseball, basketball, any sport, martial arts, um, writing, music, anything. Anything that requires that you work at it. It requires that you become the best you can on that instrument, that machine, uh, your body, whatever it be, that is is really essentially uh, what training and seat time differences are. So, for training, here's an example. Let's say you're a martial artist, right? And you're got to pay attention sometimes here. Um, so there's a prime example right there. So that example, what I just did was relying on my training and my seat time. So it was automatic, uh, except I can't talk and write at the same time. So uh, back to the differences of training, what training is, practice and training, right? So practice can be um, something that you're, you're practicing an instrument or whatever it be and training can be more of a physical thing like endurance um, that kind of thing so yes there's a difference between practice and there is a difference between training so now let's, let's talk about the difference between um, practice and training and seat time so practice is the is the art of repetition so if you're a Let's say, I'm, you know, being I'm a martial artist, let's say you're a martial artist. You are going to practice your technique, whether it be uh, a kick or whether it be, um, you know, a joint lock or grappling, whatever that be, you're going to practice that. And the way you're practicing that is you're breaking it down into form. You're not just like throwing it out there and doing it. You know, so form is going to be um, more broken down. It's going to be slower and it's going to be very precise. So you're, you're intentionally, you know, getting that muscle memory of the form and the perfection by practicing and training. So that, that applies for the same thing for, for riding uh, a bike off road. So you need to, to train and practice the skills that you need. So that would be, you know, seat time doesn't really give you that. Seat time just gives you exactly what it says, seat time. So when you're, when you're training and practicing, you are literally breaking it down to form. So if it means, you know, a skid slide, a um, whatever the thing you're practicing, your figure eights or, or whatever, your U-turns, uh, your balance techniques, sand, gravel, all of that stuff. That is practice in a, in a controlled environment. So that's, that's singularly what you're practicing. You're not doing other things and playing and stuff. You're like, okay, let's do it again. You do it again. Do it again. You know, and that's, 
that's training and practicing. And, and the reason that there's such a difference between training and practicing, I don't, I don't care how good you are or how perfect you are, how much you train, how much you practice, when you're out in the real world and and you have to use that on demand in a situation that is not controlled and not intentional, meaning you're not intending to practice sand and you come around a corner and there you are in a big wash, a lot of sand, rocks, what have you. So that's where you fall back onto your training because no matter what you're doing, I don't care whether it's piano or, or you know, baseball, martial arts, motorcycles, whatever it is, when you actually perform, nine out of ten times, you're going to not do it perfectly, like when you, when you practice. That's just the nature of it. So, for example, if you practice thousands of side kicks over and over, and then that one time, whether it's in a tournament, a fight, or whatever, that, and you need that, it's not going to be the same form, but it's going to be an 80% or, you know, something like that, which is going to still be good and still proficient, but if you don't train and all you do is seat time, so, it's, again, if all you do is go out and fight, and you don't train and you don't practice when you use that that skill it's not going to be as good so you know seat time gives you the opportunity to practice and use those skills in the wild okay you're not intending you might come across five or six different things that you that you like to do and you need to practice them so now you get to use them that's the fun part you actually get to use so that's that's my take on on training professional training um, gets you the the skill so yes you can watch youtube and go okay i think i can do a side kick or a roundhouse kick or so on so you might you might feel like you're doing it but you may be doing wrong technique which in turn is going to give you um, bad habits and not the optimal performance that you need when, when, when you know, using that skill. So having, having someone who's saying, look, yeah, that's great, you did it, you accomplished the goal, you got from point A to point B, but there was a, quite a few bad habits and sloppiness that you can improve on so that the ratio of how often you're going to be successful is higher. So we're going to try this one right here. So that's that. Oh, that makes that easy because I train, I practice, and I have seat time. I'm not just doing one or the other because all the practice and training in the world without actually doing it and, and trying it in the wild is not going to help you as much because you know you're in a batting cage and you're you're swinging that the pitches and stuff and you're you're doing a great job and everything is honky dory and you're hitting that ball good every time now you stand in front of a pitcher and what's going to happen right it's unfamiliar it's not what you're used to and so on so the seat time is just an addition to your your writing your training your practice it's not the only thing right so yes you are benefiting by by having seat time because now you're implementing your your skills that you've been practicing that that is really the gist of it that you want to better yourself and be a good rider um, so that you can go out on rides and be confident and enjoy that ride instead of it becoming a nightmare. You need to train and you need to pack, right? In addition to your seat time, right? So seat time is going to give you um, the training that you need for choosing a line, 
scoping out or you know what's the best line here I am in this situation what am I going to do so you come across the unknown here right and it's like okay that's a good line I like that that's safe right because you know when you're out you know in the wilderness in the wild you're not always going to take the hardest you know line because you know that you you need to survive you need to be able to you want to get used to be able to do your breaking as you as you need to you know so that you can be have fun so practicing breaking is something that you should practice on the course not necessarily in the wild um, you'll use it in the wild but you want to be able to call upon it and have that experience of it so again confidence right I've been through that a few times and I know I know what it is and I know what the bike's going to do and I know which route to take which is probably a safer route but for today I'm taking safe routes I'm not going to be risking risking stuff because I'm just out here testing and and getting some seat time sometimes I'll, I'll go ahead and, and take the rut just to kind of practice uh, the, the rut now some people might say well look you're riding on the left side uh, yes I am but I can see so far ahead of me that there's no one there it's the blind turns that you got to be careful with so you know that's good sand practice right there that's loose stuff that before it used to used to scare me freak me out and I'd go super slow through it and I wouldn't be able to handle it but being I'm practicing and training it's a piece of cake you know and you need to be able to put on the brakes when you come into something that you're not sure of so anyways that's that's my thoughts for today um, kind of just breaking down my opinion I'm a teacher so um, martial arts teacher from the past so I know I know what training does I mean those masters they start at three years old stretching and practicing and then when they start maturing and stuff then they're out there doing a thousand sidekicks in a practice they're out there doing you know they're out there doing you know a thousand spin kicks just repeating the same thing over and over the same feel the same strength and then 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 the practice starts becoming okay how can I do the same thing but be light and barely tap the target or, or hit it with all my force so you know that's training and you can do the same thing when you're out in the wild it's like okay I think I, I, can, I, I can avoid the ruts and I can get the right line but what if I'm in the rut what if I'm on an off camber you know what if right so you know practicing that is a good thing when you're strictly practicing you know you got people around you're not out in the middle of nowhere and all that fun stuff you can you know you can try it you know take the, the harder route take that risk to see what your limit is in the wild because yes you will be limited in the wild through your training before your training and practice the skill the skill there's a reason things are taught a certain way is because it's it's been taught and learned and utilized over and over for the year so it's 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 proven can you get by without that skill yes to a point to a point and it all equates to in that situation are you 100% confident and you're going to make that without the training and practice that odds go down that okay that one hill climb and shelf right you, you stalled you didn't you didn't make it and that that all 
equates to your training and your practice. So one thing that I like about blogging is I'm using two things here. I'm using my limited brain for talking, but I'm relying on my skill and my practice to get me through the ride because I'm not really like, I'm looking ahead, I'm seeing what's coming up, I'm seeing, making sure there's no one there. I'm doing all that stuff, but it's automatic. And that's coming from seat time. Seat time is letting me be automatic because I'm not thinking about it, I'm just doing it. And you know, at the end of the day, you can't think about it. You can't think, well, I need to press in on the tank. I need to use my foot peg. You know, just get out here and practice. See what it feels like to just steer with the foot with the foot pegs. You know, that's training and practice you can do on your own. There's really no bad technique on that, short of um, your foot position. If your foot's turned out, or or your your knee position, and things like that, which come from technique. So. You know, keep, keeping those arms bent and out is a technique and a skill that not everyone practices or does. And the more you practice it and do it, the more that when you need it is going to be there. You know, and you come up to something in the wild, you want to have the confidence that you can do that and not be freaked out or hesitant because you've never experienced it before. Well train experiencing and it's like the first time I rode this, this loop I was very timid I was very um, cautious and you know taking it easy and all that stuff just because I wasn't familiar with the terrain that I was riding on I don't ride on it a lot you know if I go on, go to Big Bend well you're going there for the weekend and that's it that's your riding there's no time to train there's no time for anything else except just riding and relying on your training. So I like to come out here. I know people kind of frown at me about it. I come out here every weekend. And I'm either riding uh, my dual sport, the 300, or I'm riding this bike. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. 100% honest with you. I am more comfortable on this bike than I am on the 300. And that's simply because the way this bike is set up. This bike is a DCT. I have my I have my gears right here. I have everything I need right here. So I, I'm used to that. It's like I have bad feet, these boots are huge. I don't have to deal with that. My rear brake is my left hand brake. It's where the clutch would normally be. But that's my rear brake brake. So I can just feather that, keep two fingers on it, cover it. I got my front brake, I can cover it, and then I can shift. All from from here, from this cab. You know, and plus the ride is much smoother. There's more weight, so it's kind of, uh, it just feels solid and, and not all over the place. So we'll try this, see what happens. Okay, not bad. So that's one thing that I like to practice is things like that. So this is a great, this right now, this session I'm doing right now is, is a practice and training. So it's like, okay, that was, I saw what it felt like for this bike, you know, and I got some berm practice here. Shifting practice, braking practice, um, all that stuff you can do on your own. As long as you have the, the right technique and you're having success. So the right technique, so that was one. That was the first jump of the day. And then the next technique, so here I get to practice my slow, where I'm just feathering the rear brake. And then let's go ahead and see what this jump feels like at a little more speed. Because you want to know what that feels like. Right, so my feet came off the pegs a little bit, but they landed right where they needed to be. I needed to be more front end up, but I'm I'm feeling what that feels like. So when I come across something like that in the wild, it's gonna be familiar and I'm gonna know, well shit, that's that's a real steep one. So I, I need to be careful. See and, and I can break that rear end loose and and feel comfortable about it. So these are little jumps. 
they don't really get air because I'm not going fast enough. But th that's just an example of of training and practice. So you want to you want to come out here and see what your suspension's doing? That's what, that's training. You're training and tuning. Training and tuning is the same thing. You cannot play a piano and train if you can't tune it. So the same thing goes for your bike. If you can't if you can't tune it, you know the suspension setup and all that stuff, you're not going to be able to play it. You'll you'll get by, but it's not going to be that quality that that sound that you've developed in your style and what you do. So, so you got a wide open space here? Yeah, cut the corner on the left because there's no one out here. As far as you can see, there's no one there. I think that that's important training. If you're always like, ah, it doesn't matter, I'm the only one out here, there's no one out here. And you're constantly just all over the place riding whatever, whatever you want to ride, then that's going to be your habit. That's your training. So when you need to do something, you're not going to be able to do it. So anyways, I think that'll, that pretty much sums up my opinion and my philosophy for training practice and seat time riding which is you know and there's you know seat time falls underneath the play so you know you don't necessarily have to train all the time when you're when you're riding you can just play let's follow these guys see where they're going do some single track You know, and single track is very uh, useful for when you want to uh, practice your line because you have a very limited line. You have to stay in that line or you're going to go off, off trail and sometimes you got some high sides there. You're not going to be able to uh, recover from that. You're going to go off. You're going to either lose it or you're going to, you're going to go off. So that's why I like doing single track like this, because it gives me, yeah, I need to stiffen up my suspension. I'm already bottoming out. You know, you get like a sandy, sandy, you know, single track like this, and you really don't have much um, options. It's good practice. So I always try to practice some single track on the AT or the 300, just to get that feel, because here, here, you know, just remind yourself, steer with the pegs, steer with the pegs, because you're not really, that's really how you're steering the bike when you're in these single tracks. Okay, stop and look, good, good. Sometimes you can hear too, so you might hear someone, because you want to play, you want to be able to play. That's the whole point, you ride the bike. You don't ride the bike to uh, train, you ride the bike because you like it, you enjoy it, and you want to come out and play. So that, that's the same thing with the training. So the training allows you to play and have more fun, more confidence, more success. It's all about success. You know, how many times can you do this loop without putting your foot down? How many times can you do this loop, you know, without with, with hitting every obstacle without an issue or a close call un, under complete control? Now, it also teaches you your limits. So I know my limits with this bike. I'm not going down some of that really tight uh, single track stuff, loose, a lot of downhills, uphills and stuff, just because I know my limits. I have a limit. I'm not 25 years old, you know? So you got to take account of your limits with your riding and your training. Yeah, and I'm not smoking through. I'm not trying to catch those guys up ahead. I'm just riding my ride. And my ride tells me to take it easy do it practice you know learn get you get your braking down you know you're going fast and you come to a section like this now it's time to be on top of it there's a lot of loose stuff you got a shelf right here and then you got to roll out into some loose to burn so this is where i call it for the uh 
I'm not going down that section because I know that's going to be harder and I don't want to do that alone and I don't want to do that today. Doesn't mean I won't do it someday, just means I'm not doing it today. Today is really to tune my suspension, tune everything else that I need to do um, so that when I do go on a ride, I'm prepared. Prepared for the loose stuff, the ledges, the rock, you know, so I run a low tire pressure, so I'm very conscious of what I'm hitting. I'm not hitting big embedded rocks, and jagged edges, and stuff like that that's gonna mess up my rim, cause me to have a flat. Oh, and by the way, it is a beautiful day out here. It's overcast, it feels cool. I haven't checked the temps, but I'm sure it's beautiful. So again, here, taking, taking the harder route, just because, you know, I feel confident and I want to practice. I want to, you know, maybe this is my only option, you know, versus this easy stuff right here. And then you're constantly scoping, so easy, because I don't know what's up ahead, right? Got to stay left when you, when you can and you can see, but you always want to ride right. So here I know there's no one up ahead, so if I don't want to go through that, I can go down the middle or I can go left. No one up ahead right now. Safely, you know, use your judgment. Again, taking the easier route is not always the thing to do because you want to get practice, right? Again, riding left because there's no one in front of me. No one, no one coming around that blind curve yet. So these are things that I'm not, I'm not necessarily watching the road. I'm, I'm watching the road up ahead, right? Making sure there's no one there and I'm letting the bike do its thing, and yeah, okay, so I saw a shelf, I saw an easy spot, you know, that's gonna become automatic, and that's seat time. Seat time gives you that automatic judgment that you're not thinking about it, and you're not doing a whole bunch of, uh, you know, well, what do I do here? How do I do this? Which way do I go? You just do it, right? And you know, when you need to look down at a technical thing because you gotta so some of that, that, that practice I do is seated because you know on a long haul you, you're gonna get tired right you don't have to stand up every time but there's a time to stand up and there's a time to sit so all of this I know I can do seated I'm just you know I'm just cruising I'm not racing but I, I like to have the feel of both of those again I can see up ahead I'm not I'm taking the easier path because I'm seated. I don't want to stand up. And then on my blind curves, I go back to to this and then, you know, you come up to an obstacle, then it's time to time to stand up because you're going up a shelf. You know, and all that Everything that let me do that with the ease that I, I felt is because of my training and my practice. My risk assession, uh, my risk assession, oh, I can't even speak. My risk assessing, you know, is automatic. So I see, yeah, I could probably do that, but it looks a little bit gnarly. So I'm, I'm gonna take the safe route. So here again, you come up to this and go, okay, Where's the, what, what can I do? What am I able to do? You know, again, another blind curve, and there's a, some nasty stuff there that I don't want to take, so I'm going to go around it, you know? Sometimes the line you want isn't the line that you're, you're given or you're going to take because you committed to something. you got to ride that out. You just got to pick you know, from your, your training, your survival mode, what you're able to do.